This is uh, Morten from Inkis TV, second day here at Printing United in Las Vegas. Um, Steve, I have interviewed you so many times, but the colors has changed, still a three letter word. What is AMP uh, about? Okay, well, it still begins with the letter A, okay? So, what is AMP? Uh, probably the last time we had an interview, I was with a company called AMS, uh, Air Motion Systems, AMS Spectral UV, which a lot of people know from the UV business and LED UV. A pioneer, I would say. And not maybe, maybe not the inventor of it, but you really refined it, right? I mean, I, 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 well, we, we were we we created a pretty good mousetrap, let's call it. Yeah. Um, but what is AMP? So AMP is a software platform. It's a, a an advanced machine monitoring platform. Uh, it is an augmented machine productivity tool. It's basically a it's cloud software uh, that connects to machines and data. So the way we describe AMP is like everybody's wearing. You know, the watches, uh, the rings, they're measuring the heartbeats, they're measuring your uh, heart rate variability, your oxygen levels. Uh, we're like, AMP is like a health data app yeah. for your machines and your process in the printing industry. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I, rem I remember when uh, we did a webinar, because that was like really early days, yeah. right? But at that time, I was so uh, intrigued because, I mean, everybody talks about IoT, but you really make it something that is like, not vendor specific, it is like you can take any IoT thing into it, right? So IoT, uh, you know, a lot of people are aware of IoT because it's around us all, all the time in the consumer world. Uh, your Alexa devices, uh, your TVs, your refrigerators, all have Internet of Things. Uh, in the industrial world, and especially in the, in the graphics industry at large, IoT is a newer thing. Uh, fundamentally what we're doing, so AMP is an IoT platform under the hood. Uh, it's written on open source protocols uh, like MQTT, which is a very important term. MQTT is the protocol standard, uh, much like HTML is to a website, MQTT is to an IoT platform. It's a way to move data very easily, uh, very cost effectively, very lightweight and very secure. So AMP uses MQTT uh, to ingest data as frequently as every second or millisecond from any connected device. Uh, could be the machine control itself on a modern machine, uh, could be a sensor that's attached, could be a uh, uh, something measuring uh, temperature, humidity, uh, uh, vibration, uh, acoustic noise. Uh, so there's, it's almost an unlimited world that's, that's evolving now. The goal is to capture data that gives us a better health data app for the machine for and the, the process. Machine. I was just wondering because, I mean, as we spoke about before, uh, IoT and uh, Internet of Things has been uh, like a term that is seen more and more and yeah. uh, across all industries, things like that. And some, some may confuse it a little bit that it has something to do with uh, JDF and uh, SIP, things like that. But this this is my, more like something that is like on a more industrial level because you have yeah. it. With, so uh, AMP builds on those things. So the standards that have existed, JDF, SIP, SIP3, uh, all of these standards are uh, definitions of, of, of standardized data, how, what, what it should look like. What AMP uses is MQTT, which is a transport protocol. So it says, okay, you have data here, we'll move it into here, now you can visualize it. With AMP, you can create conditions that you're interested in on data. So if my productivity is dropping, let's say 20% within the last hour, maybe I want to know about that. Why yeah, is that happening? Yeah, yeah. Uh, we're also developing tools for operators to make them better at the machines, better communicators uh, through smartphone apps where they can literally communicate what's going on at the machine at that time if they run into trouble or, or if they need help. So we're, we're developing an ecosystem around AMP. And as you mentioned earlier, AMP is architected openly so we can connect to any machine. A lot of the machine makers are coming out with some really cool to, uh, apps and dashboards and, and, that, and that it's exciting to see that. But it's very hard to take one brand of machines app or dashboard and put it on another brand of machine. And it's also very hard to put it on downstream equipment, like finishing equipment. So with AMP, you can basically dashboard everything in the facility. Uh, one of the things, because I mean, when first of all, congratulations on your branding here. I think it looks really cool. Uh, just to the left here says live productivity, process monitoring, job tracking, data automation. Um, I get that. And I get also that you have that uh, vendor agnostic kind of approach to having this data. I was just wondering, if we dream a little bit about, because I mean, there needs to be revenue models that is supporting yeah. uh, the investment that you're doing in, on, on, the, on the software. Can you can you think of that eventually the more data you get, because this is monitoring, right? right. But can you also ex expect that at some point maybe the amount of data and the lo uh, lo 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 logic you can build into it can actually output something that can do something? Yeah, so in theory, the more data on the platform 
Uh, you can do things like anonymous you know, contrasting of machines. And, uh, you know, some of the big machine makers in our industry already do this for their own brands. Uh, but you can but you imagine can it like extrapolating like across brands, like right? Yeah. Uh, uh, like machines uh, from two different manufacturers. So as the data grows, and you know, there can be anonymous opt-ins uh, to compare and contrast productivity rates. Uh, but uh, no, it's, it's, it's really the, the other thing that's exciting is the ecosystem of things that you can put to data. Uh, AI engines, uh, machine learning, all of these things are things we're working on now because the, this is a, it's a world where data will drive the next advantage for most people in our industry. Uh, people are going to be, as we already know, it's a challenge with, with hiring people to run machines with experience. Retaining people is hard, finding them is hard. If we can make that world a little easier for them. And as you have also mentioned to me in one of the interviews we had online, it's like the, uh, I mean, everybody's talking about it, but the schedule, uh, schedule maintenance uh, is, yep. is a, a big thing because, I mean, if you only have like one brand uh, monitoring and you don't have your other machines monitored, uh, you cannot really balance whether well. it's a good time for ma maintenance if you don't have the full picture, right? It's just like your 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 car in the old days. They yeah. would say every six months you bring it in for an oil change yeah. or something. Now it's based on data. So the car is telling you when it needs it based on how much use you've had. Yeah. Uh, and AMP's the same way. So we can enable things like uh, you know the, the a maintenance based on an actual need as opposed to a, a, a time sequence or schedule. Uh, but it's just it, there's there's really kind of unlimited. Uh, world of possibilities once you have access to your data and what you can do with it, uh, the automation you can create in your, your factory uh, between your MIS ERP systems, uh, they're feeding, they're setting up your jobs, but a lot of times it's a black hole what, hap what happens on the floor, yeah, but we're now able to visualize and, you don't know and what then happens, send the data yeah, back. Yeah. And as you mentioned, uh, closed loop control of the machines themselves is another possibility. So AMP is built on an architecture of workflow to do uh, essentially REST API communication to any of your systems. Uh, so it can trigger a message that may uh, prompt an operator to make a change. Uh, so it's all based on sort of this, this aggregation of intelligence and uh, more transparency of what's happening in real time. And of course, all the data is, is, is captured for you for the life of, of your process. So you, we can go back, we can do regression on information, and uh, that's great. Let me let me ask you a question that has nothing to do with this, but more about you. Okay. How is it to be? Uh, 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 how is it to be in a startup again? I, you can probably tell I love it. Uh, I love the energy of a startup. I love uh, you know. And and the, the thing about AMP is it's we're a startup, but we've actually been developing this for over five years. Yeah. And I, I know we, that, but and, you, and, see, you you have separated into your yes. own entity now under the Baldwin flag so still, right? But we're uh, in a way a, a startup that's that's got great backing. Uh, our parent company is a, is a very well known company called Barry Waymiller out of St. Louis. Uh, we own a lot of different packaging equipment uh, brands around oh, the yeah, world. Oh yeah, Barry Waymill is all over. Even here, I mean, yeah. at the show, you see, exactly. you see so, the B uh, B and H. Uh, but this uh, is yeah. this is really an important thing that we're yeah. doing with AMP. This yeah. is a way to to not just work on one brand of machinery, but uh, but but to be interoperate on everything on a customer's floor, uh, using the same tools that we would use as a, as a as a machine maker, yeah. uh, but extending this out to uh, to customers to, to work with their own data. And, Exciting. Uh, uh, and is it out and running now with customers? Yeah, um, we've got uh, multiple customers now that are, I would call, our sort of first wave. Yeah. We're getting a huge amount of feedback from them because yeah. uh, one of the, the, the I cool mean, that's things, the very nature of having a monitoring system, you get feedback, yeah. right? Uh, one of the cool <laughs> things, yeah, exactly. It, 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 you know, we, uh, we know what's good, and, and we're listening very carefully to what our customers are asking for in different segments of the graphics industry. Uh, labels and narrow web, uh, offset printing, digital printing, so we're getting a lot of feedback on what they care about. Do they want to know just productivity? Do they want to know uh, oh, job yeah. status? So, uh, so, you, so of course you can see what kind of data they want to refine in order to get what they find important. Color data. Yeah. Uh, uh, it could be informa information about the, uh, uh, the quality of the UV curing process. Uh, one of the, the wow. really interesting things that we're also developing uh, with our sister company is a inline cure detection sensor. Uh, it's nice. the first of its kind in the world. And you could actually put this on any, if you're running a UV process, 
uh, it's always been a mystery what's actually cured and what isn't cured in the machine. Because and now we it's can based grab on, on the ink densities and ink quality, and also if yeah. you look at UV, is the the photo initiators and the, and the frequency of the dryers that you put on it, right? So uh, it's an example of the, of the new wave, a new type of sensors that can really give us intelligence. Uh, in in the, in the past and up till recently, you only knew the lamps were on or off, and you knew if they had a what power they were at, and maybe the the photonic output. Now we can actually tell you, we can measure the, the actual curing reaction live real time, wow. and Amazing. we can correlate that to- And that can also go into the amp, so you have like yeah. as part of the IoT, exactly. of course. So we have a lot of interest in that companion product. That Steve, next time we see each other is in Copenhagen in the uh, end of November, yeah. at the non-event. So uh, Great. thank you for this time, thank and you, I look very much forward to seeing you.